Hello, welcome to Learn Knitting Now. I'm Callista, and today I'm going to be sharing a work in progress that I have on the needles, and we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Here it is. This is the collar and yoke of a sweater, and it's called the Fibonacci Rings sweater, and it's found in one of my favorite books. I have used it so many times, you can see all the <laughs> Uh, sticky notes I have. But anyway, um, the Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters, Basic Designs in Multiple Sizes and Gauges by Ann Budd. And it's actually this sweater here that I'm, that I'm knitting. Let's see if I can get good light. And I actually kind of copied the colors. The main color um, in this one here, you can see on the back a better um, the main color on this one's brown. Mine is going to be this darker, darker blue is going to be the main color. But what's fun about it is, so the Fibonacci, Fibonacci, what did I say, rings? So Fibonacci is a design element in our context. It actually has a lot of applications, but the idea is um, we're knitting rings in a certain number sequence. And that number sequence is called Fibonacci. It's found in a lot of places in nature and it's very visually appealing. And what it is, is each section is the sum of the two sections before. So this starts out with one row and then we're gonna go to one row. And so then one plus one is two. And then the next one, one plus two is three, so it'll be three rows, and then two plus three is five, and so each successive round gets bigger, um, although it does start over at one um, every so often, and we kind of, so we're not getting like 25 rows of the same color. Um, I'm not explaining that very well, but anyway, that's how we get these visually appealing rows. Um, in between the sections, is a row of slip stitch. So that's kind of what gives us a little zigzaggy effect here. I am using Wool of the Andes Worsted for the yarn. I have been working through all 100 colors that Knit Picks offers. And I think these are numbers 36, 37, 38. 39, four. Um, I have more of this orange. I'm gonna be using that in a separate sweater as well. Um, so I, my goal is to make 100 sweaters for Wool Aid, which is my favorite knitting charity. And um, some of the colors I can't make whole sweaters from because they're too light, like this this blue, it's a light, it's a light blue. Um, I can't make a whole sweater out of that because it would show dirt too easily and these sweaters are going to kids and we know how, how kids are at keeping things clean. So we need darker colors, but I still wanted to use the color and I can just kind of as a, um, a accent kind of color. So it's a top down sweater. I haven't done the, the, uh, neck ribbing yet. I do that at the end. Although I am thinking that I'm going to do that sooner than later because when you do it at the very end, you have the whole sweater and you're turning it around as you're going around and around. And yes, I know first world problem, but it is kind of annoying. And so it would be a lot easier to do if my sweater was only this big versus have the whole body and the whole sleeves. Yeah. I'm doing the second size, which is... Uh, how big is it? 32 inches. So kind of a bigger kid size. Some adults could even wear that size. Um, smaller, smaller, small adult, large child size, I guess. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. The other thing about this sweater is um, I'm going to share a little bit about how knitting can have a community that is just really fun. So I am a member of Ravelry, which uh, many of you will know, maybe some of you don't know, is an online community that um, they have tons of patterns. Lots of pattern designers will sell their patterns on there and then they each have a group 
that are kind of fans of theirs. And you can join a bunch of different groups, all kinds of interests, but they all we all have this shared love of fiber arts. So we have knitters, crocheters, spinners, uh, fiber artists of all kinds. And I found a group on there that are Harry Potter fans. And I also am a Harry Potter fan. And so what they do is, I think it ends up being three times a year for three months. So that's nine months. And then they have three months throughout the year that they kind of take a break. So um, in three month chunks, they have a contest. And if you're familiar with the Harry Potter books, um, the students are sorted into four different houses and they do that in this group. So they will assign you a house and then you play for your house. And how you play is you finish projects and then they're awarded points. Just like in the books and movies, they will award points to the different houses. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the three months wins um, as a house. And um, so it's silly. The point, I mean, it's it's like whose line is it anyway? They're fake internet points. You don't actually win anything, but it's it's fun because you get to see other people's projects and cheer them on. And anyway, they have the same classes as they do in the Harry Potter series. So, um, for example, arithmancy, which in the Harry Potter books is kind of math related magic. Um, so you can make in the, in the game on Ravelry, you can make a math related project and you get points for it. So because the Fibonacci sequence is a math related design element, this sweater is going to count for that. So that's just me being nerdy on all kinds of levels. So, um, welcome to my page. This is, this is me. And if you're into anything like that, we're friends. So um, that's what I'm working toward. It's just a goal and it helps you. There's a time limit on it. So I have three months to make this and it helps kind of push me along because I'm getting fake internet points for completing it. Um, so anyway, that is the sweater. I've talked about the yarn. I've talked about the pattern and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this book. Um, I make a lot of sweaters. In fact, sweaters and hats is pretty much my jam and what I make the most of. And I don't usually buy a lot of physical printed books or patterns. Um, I buy a lot of my patterns online and if I need to print them, I do. And, but I bought this because it's got so many different sweaters and they're really more like recipes than actual patterns and that works for me so well because I like to take creative liberties and I like to make things my own and so this book really helps that so it is laid out in a way that so there's like four basic basic designs um, and you can see the difference in how the sleeves are attached and so it's got instructions, basic instructions for how to make each one of those. And then um, it has charts laid out for by gauge. So if you're using a thicker yarn and you have a larger gauge, it shows you how to make that sweater with that gauge. If you have a thinner yarn, a higher gauge, um, or smaller gauge, I guess it would be a smaller gauge then it shows you how to make a pattern or how to make a sweater with that. And so you make your swatch and then <laughs> swatches, <laughs> well, you make your swatch and, and then follow the directions for whatever gauge you got. And I really like that. And then that allows me to do stripes. It allows me to do different um, kinds of color work patterns. It allows me just a lot of creative expression, but I also have some guidelines so that I know what I'm making is going to end up being proportionate and not have, you know, little tiny arms and a big wide chest. So um, that is one of the things I really liked about this book and I've used it a lot. And so um, Ann Bud is a very well-known designer and she has a lot of, um, I think she has a similar book for mittens um, 
which I don't have because I have knit mittens before, but they're just not my favorite. Um, and so it's not a, and I think she might have a socks one too. I did go on a jag a while ago, um, knitting socks and that was, um, you know, that was fun, but I don't, I don't have her book for that, but she does have a book, I think for that. I'll have to, I'll have to go and look. But that is my Whip Wednesday for my Fibonacci Rings sweater. Let me know in the comments what you're working on. I'd love to hear.